John, uh, pictures with a social conscience are starting to now come out and they can also do well. They're commercially successful and yet they are, they are movies with a message. Yeah, I think um, um, my first production was uh, with a director that CERN was very well, was Vicky Dono. Uske baad, uh, we did Madras Cafe and uh, now we're doing a film which we believe is uh, uh, very relevant to the country. It's a film called Parmanu. And it's about how India conducted the nuclear tests in, in 98. And uh, we are here today and a lot of youngsters sitting here or watching uh, this program, if they want to understand why India is really cool or that great country today, it's because we are a nuclear power. And nuclear power is never always used for uh, negative purposes and that's what we've shown in our film. That uh, there was a no first use policy. Um, and it's, it's quite an intriguing subject, it's an intriguing film and we're very proud to be a part of it. One yeah. of the problems that of course making films based on either historical events or current events or real events is in today's day there are a lot of people who are willing to quickly take offence to it which I guess is a problem that you're constantly facing whether it was your previous film or a lot of films, there, Madras Cafe or somebody yeah, would come up and say why have you done it this way and not yeah. done it that way. If you're just doing a normal love story or a comedy then that doesn't happen I guess. Yeah, but that's I think uh, that's a choice you make as a, as a filmmaker, that's a choice you make as an actor and uh, you've got to stand by the choices you make. Uh, you could be one film old or you could be a hundred films old, but it's a sense of conviction you, you need to have towards uh, your craft, your art. And I stand by my choices, so it's as simple as that. Do you think at some point in time nuclear power could be used towards a campaign like Swachh Bharat? Yeah, nuclear power is, uh, nu nuclear power is actually uh, zero emissions, zero gas emissions. And we've got, I think, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure, I think we've got 22 nuclear reactors. Uh, we've, in America, 20% of the electricity created in America is through nuclear energy. And, uh, you know, for 18 months to up to two years, you don't even need to refill anything. And it's zero gas emissions. And I think India is moving in that direction. We've signed packs in 2016 and... Um, with Japan. Uh, in 2015, we signed something with James Cameron. Um, in 2008, we signed something when uh, uh, Manmohan Singh was in, in power at that point of time. So, uh, we're a very uh, self-sufficient nation. We're a very aware nation. And I think uh, we are moving in the right direction. We want to be self-sufficient. We want to have our own nuclear reactors. We want to create our own energy. And we've got certain, uh, the Fukushima event did slow down things for us a bit. But we are back on track and I think by 2032, hopefully we'll be a completely self-sufficient nation as far as uh, electricity goes with zero gas emissions. And that's why nuclear power is important. And that's why Parmanu is a very, very, very important film to India. And I'm not saying it to, to plug a particular film, but I'm saying it because I think it's a film that India must see today. There are certain films like Pink that you did, sir. Very important film, Toilet. These are important films. Parmanu is an important film. Right. right. So, a lot of this uh, nuclear power that we were talking about, uh, Vikram, about pollution and air pollution, perhaps this is perhaps the future. But, sir, I think certainly there's going to be a technological solution to the, some of the issues around fossil fuels that we're already hearing That's about. Right, yeah. Because between nuclear power, certainly solar, wind, all of these are very fast advancing right. and uh, there's every reason to believe that fossil fuels as a concept is going to be phased out within 15 years to 25 years and it, there will not be petrol burning cars, there will be electrical cars. Yeah. So at least some of the issues about air pollution all will come down. That might mean that there's more petroleum to convert into plastic and throw on the beach which is the downside but let's hope we can find an answer to that. Nuclear power is the fourth largest source of electricity in this country after hydroelectric, after thermal etc. But I think uh, in another, uh, I think by 2021, it will probably be the largest source of electricity in this country and speaks volumes of why India should be self-sufficient. If I could just shift the focus a little bit and get, get you, uh, uh, you inside it, the hygiene index is something which I just want to talk to you about and maybe, uh, you know, Pinaki Nanjan, you can just talk to us a little bit about this. Hygiene index is designed to, nothing better than competition. I can tell you all through the day, we've been, when we were talking to all the chief ministers, we've talked to many of them since the morning, they're all saying, we are going up the hygiene index or down the hygiene index, or we are doing slightly better, we're doing slightly worse. That's the best thing to see, because that's the way you'll really get changed. Like, when you're trying to get kids to do something, gamify it. When you're trying to get chief ministers to do something, gamify it. And that's where the hygiene index perhaps comes in. 
Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it and then I'll get right. to Chris. So, uh, I think you are absolutely right. Uh, when we met in April uh, in a similar program, you know, we had then done the study for 10 cities. And we said that if cities compete with each other, maybe they'll improve faster. And interestingly, now we have completed 25. We found some smaller places like Pimpri, Chinchwad, Shimla, which are now in the top bracket, you know, vying for the top slot. We also found some cities which uh, have increased their ratings. So after the after they were published, they actually came back to us saying that, look, we didn't disclose all this information. I mean, that, that's brilliant. That's what we need, that cities not only do more, they talk about it more. And we also have now found out uh, some areas of uh, underinvestment. For example, sewerage is grossly underinvested. Communication to people is grossly underinvested in most places. So at least once we fix all these, probably, and we'll do this measurement over the next couple of years as well to judge how they are progressing in the path. Thomas, if I could ask you about that, what are the main features that really go into deciding whether a city is hygienic or not hygienic? So we measure cities on their performance in the areas of water, drinking water, service delivery, sanitation, disposable of raw sewage, uh, behavior, uh, change campaigns, and that kind of thing. And then we compile the evidence uh, that we get from city managers, from conversations with city officials, uh, and, then, and then in that way compile the, the index. Ravi, right. any surprises in the hygiene index for you? I mean, lots of cities moving up and down, lots of flux. Yeah. So, after doing the index, we reached out to the city, various cities, 25 cities. We told them, like, you know, one of the major challenges is, like, you're not investing enough with the children on the behavior change. So, they said, like, you know, what is the solution? Then we came out with, like, you know, the 45 chapters that we have designed, the curriculum for the three years. Many of the cities have adapted that. Many want to adapt that. And now they also think like, you know, really children can be, you know, a, a change, a, you know, change bearer. On the top of that, like there are some cities which are prepared for going to the next generation in terms of uh, communication, electronic medium and more investment in that. But when you see their performance on basic things like sanitation, drinking water, portable drinking water, they're far behind the ladder. Right. Uh, yeah. Amit do you think that should be something the city should look at first? Basic levels of hygiene, sanitation. Yeah, well, you know, water, drinking water has always been a problem. Pina ka pani, sablo bolte rehte hain. Bahut si achhi achhi machine ban gayi hain. Ab sablo ghar mein lagate hain. Uska istihar bhi hum dekhte hain. Lekin kahin na kahin ek sarvajanik roop se, agar ye pina ka pani jo hai, iski jo samasya hai, ye dur ho jaye, to har desh, har har shahar, har mohalla, har prant mukti mil jayegi unko pollution se. Right. John, just get a final word from you, perhaps, on the entire question of swachata and cleanliness. This must be something that bothers you when you're driving around, yeah. when you're looking at the filth, plastic. We've been trying to wage a war against plastic now for eight, nine years with, you know, medium levels of yeah. success. Um, is that something that bothers you? Yeah, of course, you know, I mean, um, see, I'm a layman and when you read, uh, you know, when you Google and you read certain articles and you, they ask you, how long does it take for, for plastic to disintegrate? In, in common parlance, and when you're told uh, 200 years, you're like, my God, and you know, you think twice and you say, listen, you tell your guy who's going shopping, please don't get a plastic bag home. And it affects you momentarily, but I don't, I think there needs to be a, a consistency in our approach. And I think uh, today it also comes out of not just education, but having pure consideration for society. And I think uh, to a large extent, if I have to be very critical, we lack a lot of it because you see educated people throwing plastic bags out of a car. So you can't just point at a per person and say he's responsible for this. It's, it's all of us that are responsible for this and we need to make a change. And, uh, uh, you know, it has to come internally and then only can it percolate down to the audience. Right. 